a new lease of life for the Gunting Tea Estate, and a little more on our plantation industry in this little chat with Dr. Henry Barlow. Going back to Ginting Tea Estate, um, initially the sensible thing to do with it seemed to be to plant the acreage up at the back with fruit trees. And I did this with the assistance of a Chinese foreman who came from Negris and Bila and uh, from a family which had uh, grown fruit trees for many years. We planted uh, D24 durians and star fruit and mandarin oranges. However, we found that the durians didn't fruit terribly well because it was at uh, 700 meters above sea level, about the maximum height at which durians would grow. Uh, star fruit were problematic because all the little fruit developed at the same time and each individual one had to be bagged to prevent it being infested by fruit flies. And the oranges suffered from all kinds of horrible viral diseases. In addition to which, it was becoming by 1990 increasingly difficult to find adequate labor. We simply couldn't get the labor. So I gave some fairly careful thought to what we were going to do with it. And in the course of rewriting Macmillan's Tropical Planting and Gardening, I had been challenged by a friend to write something about uh, Southeast Asian forestry. And that drew my attention to the fact that A, I knew nothing about Southeast Asian forestry, which was a serious gap in my knowledge. Um, and B, that a very large number of West Malaysian forest trees, timber trees, diptocarps, were in serious danger of going extinct. And this led me on to um, assisting in the rewriting of Symington's Diptrocarps. This was an interesting book. Uh, Symington was a colonial forester who came out to Malaya in about 1935. He must have spent practically all his time in the forest. He developed an encyclopedic knowledge of the 160 or so diptrocarp species which are found in Peninsula Malaysia and wrote a book which was about to be published when the Japanese invaded. He himself escaped um, to Nigeria where under circumstances which I never fully fathomed he committed suicide. However, Corner, who I spoke about earlier, who had been asked by the Japanese to continue to maintain the botanic gardens in Singapore, made it his business to ensure that Symington's work was actually published by the Japanese during the war years. And of course, it was long out of date by the late 80s, early 90s. Um, so I was able to assist in the updating and republication of this. And this, of course, made me much more aware of the danger in which many of these species were, because the lowland forest was all being chopped down. And it made sense to plant up the old fruit tree areas with these diptocarp seedlings. And I was very lucky in that um, I had an Indian colleague, much younger than me, who'd spent a lot of time um, collecting seeds of these diptrocarp species in residual patches of primary forest, most of which have now been chopped down. And so many of these species are, to all extent and purposes, extinct in the wild. Are there any in Frim right now? Don't yes, but that's not in the wild, they're cultivated. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so the collection that I have now in Peninsula Malaysia is second only to Frim, and in some cases we've got many more specimens and indeed species which uh, are not represented in the Frim collection. 
And given the fact that Fryn is in an area which must be very, very ripe for development, if anything would happen to Frim, uh, the Ginting Tea Estate collection would probably be the most comprehensive in the country. And I've been extremely lucky at uh, Ginting Tea Estate in that my manager there came to Frim as a boy age six, um, grew up at Frim, oh, came to Ginting Tea Estate, Ginting Tea Estate. Uh, grew up there. I think he had a not a very happy childhood, uh, came back and worked as a field worker. And when my Chinese manager suddenly gave notice, he took over and has never looked back since. And he has now become more knowledgeable about diptrocarps than I am, um, and knows exactly how to plant them and make sure that they grow satisfactorily. So we now have a, really a very interesting and scientifically valuable arboretum. Um, up at the back of the tea estate with a number of species uh, having already flowered and fruited and produced fertile fruit. Uh, some for the first time in captivity, they've never been properly observed before. So scientifically, it's a very valuable yeah, resource. Absolutely. And at the same time, more recently, about four or five years ago, some people came up from University of Malaya to check out various aspects of my insect collection and one of the party was a young Malay man um, and as we were standing around chatting I said oh um, I was looking for somebody to um, catalogue the collection and uh, update the data labels the old labels were perished and they needed museum standard paper labels he popped up and he said, oh, well, I've got nothing to do for the next six months between waiting for my results. I'll come up and do it. And four or five years later, he's still at it. <laughs> and he you mean has... The collection is that big? Well, he's photographed... Or is he slow? No, no, he, he's, he's pretty assiduous. But he's photographed all the species represented in the collection, which is over 3,000 up to the standards of the databasing which is undertaken by the Natural History Museum. He attended a course, which unfortunately was cut short by COVID, um, in London at the Natural History Museum, so he understands the technicalities. And he has corrected the many misidentifications of species, which I was responsible for. So we have two very comprehensive databases, the Diptrocarp one, and the moth collection one, the latter being associated with um, breeding exercises where I found the larvae, the caterpillars, and managed to breed them out. In certain cases, the first time they've ever been bred out and photographed. And this is all being reviewed by the Southeast Asian Rainforest Research Program, which also does its research at Danham Valley. And the proposal is that the old Ginting Tea Estate operation will be folded into the Southeast Asian Rainforest Research Project when I am no more. Mm. Wow. So what will, what will the Ginting Tea Estate be with all that? You said it would go to some... To some the Southeast Asian Rainforest Research Rainforest Project. Research, okay. And they think that the main house uh, would be very suitable for high-level conferences. Um, and also it's a place where there are various independent flatlets or workers' quarters which can be used for individual research workers who wish to come up and... Yes, and will there be individuals who will already be set to, to take over this whole thing? Yeah. The, great. Yeah. Fantastic. I hope you have found this episode engaging and see you at the next one.